have an idea in your mind of something you want and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to the Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want. Create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Welcome to this week's Idea Space podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and I'm continuing my October theme about the things that keep us from what we really want the most. So, whether that's like buying the house of your dreams or leaving your job, maybe changing a dynamic in a relationship you have or something in your life, or growing your business, which is my favorite topic, uh, I want to talk about how we keep ourselves from doing that. Now, last week I spoke about this habit that I had and that I see a lot of my potential clients have of asking permission or waiting for permission. I would wait for permission from my husband or my business partners or my friends. And it kept me circling around my goals rather than zeroing in on them. And so if you want to go back to that episode and listen to it, it's a really helpful tool to just twist the idea of permission for you. And it changed my life. And I am much more in flow, much more happy, and I get what I want almost all the time. Uh, But this week, I want to twist that topic just a little bit. And now I want you to understand that asking permission is outright a way that we give our power away to someone else. Like their yes or their no solidifies our worth. That's kind of what it comes down to, right? If they say yes, then yay. And if they say no, then shit. And they suck. Or maybe we suck and we really deserved the no, right? So as I explained last week, I've learned how to ask for permission less, less frequently, and go for more of a conversation that explores options. So when I did this, it changed my life for the better, but I had a sister habit uh, that was keeping me stuck. And it was a way of asking permission that I had not quite noticed about myself until fairly recently. So what is it already, right? I I have this habit of constantly looking to everyone else as the expert. Everybody else is going to give me the answer. I would ask their input. I would gather their opinions. I would see if they liked my idea or if they were going to give me the go ahead or if they had anything to add to change it. This is a form of waiting for permission. It's a sneaky way of keeping yourself from moving forward and from making what you want real. Now, when we do this, we overlook our own capabilities because the fact is we just don't trust ourselves. We're really waiting for somebody else to give us the green light. And we're more likely to trust those other people because they've sometimes got more training or they have more experience or they have both. Or frankly, sometimes it's just that we've been conditioned that this person is the person we need to wait for. And sometimes all that other person has is a louder opinion. It doesn't necessarily mean they know what they're doing. They just might be louder. Here are some ways that I've sabotaged myself in this way over the years. Now, my husband, as I've mentioned many times before, he's got over 30 years experience in running businesses. And he has an advanced degree. He's got an MBA. Um, He's taken hundreds of businesses from idea to startup. And anytime I have a business question, I would go to him. He's generous with his knowledge, obviously. And he's, um, you know, very equal. Uh, he has nice equanimity in his advice. He kind of doesn't should all over me. But frankly, he's never run a digital business before. He's never had to do marketing the way I do marketing. And so he's, his whole business runs on referral and like everybody knows who he is. So he just doesn't really have to do a lot of the stuff I have to do. So why do I keep asking my husband for advice about my digital business and my marketing? Because in my mind, he's an expert at 
everything in business. And whenever I would share a strategy I was going to try, uh, if he didn't meet my enthusiasm level, my first thought would be, oh no, I did this all wrong. Maybe I'm making a huge mistake. John's not excited about it. So I, it must not be the right choice. Like I really had that thought. And frankly, sometimes I have to check myself because I still have that thought sometimes. You know, self-doubt is an evil little bitch who creeps into my mind every single day. And if you think that I don't struggle with self-doubt, like you're not listening closely because self-doubt is something that everybody grapples with and I grapple with it almost every day. My brain is always looking for clues that I'm making the wrong decision. It can be exhausting and I'm sure you understand. So when someone I deem an expert in something doesn't like immediately hop on board, like immediately and enthusiastically, I assume I'm doing something wrong. And I wonder if you've ever done this too. It's a form of permission seeking and it's dangerous because it allows self-doubt to flare up. And when self-doubt shows up, the party is over. Here's another example. Uh, for years, my dad worked at a car dealership as the service manager, and he grew up around cars. He, he knew everything. To me, as a child, my father knew everything about cars. He fixed neighbors' cars in our driveway. He would change their oil in our garage throughout my childhood. Like This man was a car guy. And then later on in my teenage years, he moved into designing and selling fire trucks. And that was a big job that I didn't even know existed. But like, he's always been like a motorhead, right? He's a handy guy. And in my opinion, he knows everything about every vehicle, big and small, that's out there. So when I wanted to buy a new car, I called him and asked his opinion. And he told me what to look out for because he really likes to tell me what to do and what kind of vehicle to buy and which brands were the best, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He had a lot of opinions about it, right? But here's the thing, for years, and I'm talking since hybrids came out, I have wanted a hybrid car. I've really loved the idea of them, and I think they're cute too, but I really always wanted a Prius. And my dad consistently told me right from the beginning what a bad choice a hybrid is because they're too expensive to fix and who knows what's going to happen to them. I mean, this is back in the day he was saying this. 20 years later, here we are, hybrids are still a thing. So he had lots of opinions about hybrids, and I listened carefully to all of his opinions, and I believe he knew what he was talking about in terms of hybrid cars. Here are a few things I forgot. This man has not worked in the vehicle space in over 20 years at this point. He's a man with strong opinions, but very little introspection. Also, even if one at one point in 1998 what he said about hybrids were true, maybe they have changed in the last 20 years. Maybe they've improved, right? Maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, do you ever do this? Do you ever blindly trust somebody in authority because they seem to know more than you do? Or you trust somebody who has a louder opinion than you? Or you just go along to get along because it seems too hard to go the other way? So I spent most of my life listening to those with louder, stronger opinions because I believed they knew what they were talking about. And some of their opinions were based in experience and fact, but some people just have loud opinions. So here are some examples. The business partner I had who was positive that adding a new and expensive line of spinning bikes to our studio would be the answer to our problems. And it wasn't. The teaching colleague with 40 years of experience who was sure that if I left my comfortable teaching position, I would regret it if I went into business for myself. Uh, I still have yet to regret it. The family member of mine who insisted that I must have more than one child because my son couldn't be happy unless he had brothers and sisters and he would be a miserable, selfish child. And frankly, we're all just fine. Thank you very much. So are you waiting for the people that you deem as experts to give you permission? Are you waiting for people to jump on board and get excited and gleefully exclaim that you're making the right choice? Because if you are, you're exhausting yourself. You're depleting yourself. This will just keep you circling and never zeroing in on your goals. The solution? Earn trust back with yourself. You know your strengths and you probably know your weaknesses too. I sure do. For example, I am not great with interior design. And one time, because of this weakness, I wound up with a couch that was three times too big for the living room I wanted to put it in. It was also white, which is stupid to do when you have a small child and two cats. 
So when I have a big need to change my vision and do something different with the decor in my house or I'm adding on something to my house, I hire an expert and listen to her. But I don't listen to her blindly. I have opinions. I know what I want and what I don't want. And if somebody's going to shoot all over me and tell you, you have to do it this way, that is not my person. I want someone who's going to go along with me, ask me questions, and work with what I want and what I like. Just because someone's an expert does not mean that they have all the answers for you specifically. Yes, go get support, get help, get opinions, get educated. Then try some of those things out because there is no one size fits all, my friends, especially when you are growing a business. It's true in your parenting. It's true in marriage. It's true everywhere. There is no one size fits all. And if you try something out and it doesn't work, thank God, now you know you can stop doing that thing, right? My client, Teddy, is a great example of this. In the course of our work together, she's played with a couple of different models of her business. Every time she tries something out, she explores how it's working. She explores how it feels for her, and she explores what's not working also. Sometimes there are things that just don't feel good. She keeps tweaking, and I give her guidance. I give her support. I give her resources. I kind of like figure out what's going on in her head. I, clear out her, I help her clear out her mind to get where she wants to go, but she has to trust herself. She says to me, I realize I want this, I don't want that. And it's not my job to tell her, here's the business model for you. Don't use that title, charge this amount. Like It's not my job to tell people those things. It's my job to help them get where they wanna go using best practices and getting there more quickly and, and having somebody to bounce ideas off of and say, does this work, will this sound good? But she had to learn to trust herself. And if you think of it, I'm kind of like her training wheels, right? I'm not an expert that she's just blindly following. Because if she was running the business the way I would run her business, we'd have two very different businesses. I like doing things differently than she does. It doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm talking about. And it doesn't mean that she has to do something that doesn't feel good to her. One size does not fit all. Stop looking to the big name gurus for the answer. Stop clicking on ads that promise this is the perfect sales funnel. If you just buy this thing, you can fill it all in and it'll be done for you. There is no perfect answer. There is no one model that fits for everyone. So whatever you're trying to create or build or grow or bring to life, you must adopt the philosophy that it's all an experiment. Those with more experience than you are great resources, but they are not oracles. There is no one answer. I don't know how many times I can say that. There is no one way. And you're setting yourself up for failure if you're always looking for somebody to grant you permission. Give yourself permission to move forward and try on a solution. How do you get what you want without sabotaging yourself and giving your power away? Here are three examples. One, know what you want. Do you know? I spend a lot of time with people who don't even know what they want. You need to spend a lot of time here and really suss out what it is you want. The number one problem that I hear in my discovery calls with people is, I just don't know what I want. I want this and I want this and I want this and they don't know how to make it happen. So get clarity. Please imagine what clarity will look like. And P.S., like in terms of my own clarity, I still want a hybrid, but I haven't bought one yet. And it just wasn't the right time for me the last time I bought it, but it wasn't because of what my father said. It was just because the right car didn't come along at the right moment but I know I'm clear on what I want eventually. Two, second strategy, seek out supporters and guides who do not shove their opinions down your throat. If you're hearing you should and you have to do it this way and this is the way it's done, take a moment and decide if this person is really speaking in your best interest and whether it's good advice or if it needs a grain of salt thrown in. Three, third solution, Trust yourself. Every move forward is scary without a doubt. Leaving a stable but soul-sucking job, having one, two, or three children, God, even getting a dog is scary. But here's how you can learn to trust yourself. Think of the worst case scenario, and then think of what you would do if the worst case scenario came true. Can you handle that? Of course you can. You have earned self-trust because you've done hard things in the past, and you can handle hard things in the future. So whose advice are you blindly following because they are in authority or they are louder than you or they have more experience than you or they have a vested interest in the outcome? Sometimes that's true too. You can change that paradigm with a simple conversation 
or they don't even need to know that you're doing it. Just start, just start taking action. Just start trying, just start experimenting because I promise six months from now, you won't believe the changes you'll see in your life. And if you have been circling around with an idea that you want to bring to life, I have a three month program that gets you not only started in your business and gets you clear in your vision. It will, you will leave the program with a signature offer that you have priced that you can bring to market and then you can move on with your business. You don't have a business if you don't have something for people to buy. So if you want to check that out, go to jenliddy.com forward slash idea space, I-D-E-A-S-P-A-C-E. The three month program is $97 a month for three months until October 31st. And after that, the price is going up. And I know this program works because the people in it have done amazing things. And I'm, I don't work with anybody until I talk with you on the phone. So get on a call with me. You can go find that at my website. Thank you for listening all the way through. I hope this helps you and I want you to take permission back. The only person you need permission from is yourself. Thanks. Bye. See you next week. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week, and remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye!